I want to share a quick story with you guys. This is a story that centers around a character by the name of you. Now, this is an individual that a majority, if not all of us can relate to at some level because all of us have a little bit of you in us, if not a lot of bit, if not, we might damn well be you. So story starts with baby you born into the world, a precious vessel of absolute joy and goodness, just a bundle of life. And you comes into this world knowing that you is perfect. Now, this may not be a conscious recognition, but there is an internal knowing, right? That there is no wrong. There just is existence. You is just being. You has no job. You has no uh, relationships to maintain. You has no perception to create for anybody. And you is accepted exactly as you is. And so you is born into this world just as you are. And all of a sudden, you starts to realize that I've been born into a world that sort of has these rules and regulations. It has a way of being about it already, right? And so you, you know, being somebody who is, in essence, malleable and adaptable, realizes that in order for you to survive this world that you has been born to, you must adapt. You must shape shift. You must become what this environment is. And so you is not only born into this world, but now is being raised up in this world. And this world is one which already has everything laid out from what you should and shouldn't be doing to who you should be and who you cannot be. And so you starts to take these, these messages upon themselves continuously, perpetually from every direction from those who are closest and those who are far away, from the nearest and dearest voices to those that seemingly would have been irrelevant if they weren't introduced into you's life on a consistent basis. And as you is being raised and as you is being essentially conditioned into this way of being, you forget exactly who you are. Now, I'm sure y'all have already caught on to... um who this main character actually is. Spoiler alert, it was in the name the whole time. You got it. You got me. You got me. That's what I was doing right there. So you find yourself in a place where you have lived months, years, years into decades. And decade after decade, you've lived this very same humdrum experience. I'm going to call it what it is. You have lived a miserable life, oftentimes miserable, some of the time joyful. You have lived a life based upon the criteria of others. You have lived this life based upon the he saying, the she saying, and what it is that you believed would get you some sense of recognition, of acceptance, of value and validation from this world. And in the process, you completely lost who you truly were. Now, there comes a time in which you, maybe it's this time, maybe it's, you know, a time to come, maybe it's already happened, but there comes a time in your life when you start to question why it is that you are living in this way. If there is any other way to live, if this is all there is to life, is it just, you know, going along to get along? Is it just doing in order to satisfy and satiate this, this machine and this organism that we have created that we mistakenly call life is this all there is and you start to dig deeper into that question sometimes you fear the very question sometimes you fear any question you know as far as myself i feared even questioning the the absolute foundation of the belief system that i was indoctrinated into i i was afraid to question the god that i was given the version of god that i was given i fear to question the version of life that i was given and what life truly was at its very essence. And so I feared asking, truly and genuinely asking who I was. And that, again, it, it persisted me, or at least it, it continued me down this path of living the lives of others, of masquerading myself as anything that others needed me to be. I became what you will call a people pleaser at the earliest stages of life. And I learned how to adapt quickly. I learned how to be likable. I learned how to be nice enough to get certain people's attention and not nice enough to get others. I learned what it took to fit into one group as opposed to the other. And when I was viewed, I know y'all might not like this. Y'all thinking spiritual folks, he's over here about to kill this little bug. I am, I am. 
Today might be his, if, if he's going to keep hovering around this, it's going to be his last day. And I'm okay with that. So I'm not here to make you feel any type of way. I'm just here to take care of my own business and my own life. So back to the point at hand. I found myself in a place where enough was enough. I could no longer take it. The inauthenticity just wasn't, it wasn't doing it anymore. You know, the pretending wasn't doing it anymore. It didn't matter how much validation I got, how much acceptance, how how many smiling faces were, you know, were shining back at me per se, because within myself, there was no smiling face. I, I was liked by others, but I did not like myself. I knew how to look happy, but I'd actually never been happy, at least not maybe since my my infantile or toddler and, and maybe a little bit of my adolescent years, right? But it had been decades since I had actually experienced life on my own true terms. And of course, you know, there were segments where society would call it rebellion, right? That I, I ran to the mere opposite. I tried to do things, you know, against the conformity of this world. But most of that was honestly rooted in me just trying to find an escape as opposed to getting back to my true essence and my true life to the core of what was going on. I was looking for an escape like most of us, right? So I found myself at 14 um, getting hooked to drugs until I was around 19 years old. And then I had um, a moment of self-actualization around that time after a, a heavy, heavy addiction for five years that, you know, led to the ending of the lives of three of my closest friends uh, within this last decade. None of them ever got to see the age of even 30. And. You know, even before that happened, there was something in me that was saying, this can't be it, this can't be it, this can't be it. And that was always the thing that I questioned or the the thing that I followed, the thing that was continuously and perpetuating, just, just showing up at every turn, like, this can't be it. Is this it? Is this really it? Is this actually it? Like, this is life? Is this how you're going to live life? Is this how you're going to move through? And so, you know, I, I found myself getting out of drugs, but only finding another addiction. And I fell into or found myself in the world of personal development, self-help, trying to fix myself and correct myself and become somebody who was worthy of acceptance and worthy of people's value. It was the exact same boat that I was on and just, you know, had a different paint job on it in essence. And it wasn't until quite recently, last couple of years, where I truly started digging to the core and said, no, I'm I'm done I'm done with this. I'm done living this life in service of an ideal, in service of an idea in people's heads, because that's all I become. I become nothing more than whatever the people around me needed me to be at that moment. And I realized in these moments, in these, you know, I believe that there were uh, opportunities, just as everything else is in life, to truly wake up to myself. And it was also an opportunity to look at everything that I've been running from for the entirety of my life, which seems terrifying to most of us. And so we find ourselves in a place where we're perpetually in this constant, never ending cycle of, you know, hearing our spirit, hearing that voice within ourselves, hearing our intuition and drowning it out, hearing it and drowning out, hearing it and drowning out. And then we have to get to the extremities. We have to have, you know, what they call this kind of rock bottom experience to then wake up right? And the beauty of life is you don't have to go through that type of experience in order for you to make that shift into your own true life. You don't have to do that. That is a choice. But the reason why we consistently and perpetually make the choice to not listen until it's so drastic is because we are so addicted to the life that we know. We are fully and absolutely enraptured by that life. And what I've realized and this is maybe just my own experience, but I would doubt that be the case because I am as human as anybody else listening and watching. Maybe you're not human, but you will still probably relate to this, right? Maybe you're a canine or something like that. Maybe you're a marsupial. I don't know what the hell you are, but you're here listening and, and something is striking a chord. And so what I've come to realize is that for most of us, the reason why we fear this change, the reason why we are so disabled by just the idea of having another life other than the one we know is because we don't know what that world looks like first and foremost, right? We know what it is to be in a state of misery and we're familiar with it. 
right? We know what it is to be in toxic and broken relationships because we're familiar with it. We know what it is to be, you know, sad, depressed, mad, anxious, bitter, resentful. We know that because we've practiced that for so long. You know, from some of the first moments we came into this planet, we're already being indoctrinated into this way of of being that is not natural, but it is normalized. You know, we know what it is to be in a state of dis-ease as opposed to our natural state of ease. So it's not that, you know, again, these things are not natural. The natural state of being for any of us is peace, is love, is, is joy, is harmony. That is natural. But we have been used to something else which has been normalized that we have come to know that is natural. And the reason why it always feels off is because it's not natural. But again, we find ourselves in that perpetual cycle and loop because we are deeply afraid of what that will mean about our own lives. Will I be neglected? Will I be abandoned? Will I be, will I be rejected? Simple as that. Will people not like me because I am now different or I'm now other than the thing that they wanted me to be? And this is a reality check for all of us because there is a truth in this, right? I've made a few different videos on the subject of, you know, when the people around you, family, friends, et cetera, those who you believe should be supporting you most are not showing that level of support. And I speak on the obvious um, kind of glaring theme here, which is that it is rooted in their own insecurities and those things being brought to the surface. However, when you start to change and you start to see people around you react to that, you also must face those aspects of yourself that you have been clinging onto for so long. Your own deepest insecurities are also going to come to the surface, Right? Your own fears of a loss of love, quote unquote love, and what that may mean for you or rejection and what that may mean for you. Before you come to a true understanding that there is no rejection, there is only redirection, there is no loss of love, that you can only be loved because you are love, right? That is your essence. Before you come to that true revelation for yourself, within yourself, you're going to find yourself deeply triggered And this might be the very thing that pulls you back into that way of being, that old way of being, into the familiar patterns and the familiar habits. If you step out of a friend group where all y'all did is is gossip all day and complain, and you make a decision within yourself that this is not fruitful for you, that this is not serving you or anybody else in any sort of way, and that you want a a deeper and higher and greater expression of, of life, to use your tongue to bless as opposed to curse. When you make a decision like that, you are essentially saying everything that the group I identified myself with stands for, I'm no longer for. And that comes with a denial or a quote unquote seeming rejection from those very same individuals because you now become the person who is the antithesis or the opposite of what they are. And you're now, again, bringing up the very flaw of the things that they're doing, right? It's not about good or bad. It's not about evil or good. It's simply about they begin to see that there is a way in which is actually productive that, you know, they didn't have to face before that is now right in front of them. And when you try to maintain those relationships, what often tends to happen is you fall back into those same habits. It's not going to be that, you know, these five people that you used to meet up with every Sunday, every Saturday or whatever it is, or this two or the one person you're always on the phone with, it's not necessarily going to be that, oh, all of a sudden, because I decided, you know, to to shift my level of consciousness, I decided to to move through life more awake and aware, to move towards love as opposed to towards fear, that they're going to do the exact same thing, you know? And that's something I had to accept. It's like, bro, just because you decided that you aren't going to be on the dope anymore, you aren't going to be smoking dope, selling dope. That does not mean that those individuals in your past, those individuals that you call brothers, those individuals that you spend every single day with doing those things with, it doesn't mean all of a sudden, oh, you know, you're, yeah, you're right. Yeah. We're just going to stop using these coping mechanisms, these, you know, these modems of numbing that we've been using our entire life. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Let's stop because he said so. Absolutely not. 
And what's more likely to happen is that because I have not dealt with my fears of losing that sense of identity within those people, I then swing all the way back, swing low, sweet chariot. I swing back into my very own bondage. And again, this is something that, you know, we must recognize because it is a part of our evolution. It's a part of the journey. You will find yourself sometimes swinging right back into those very same habits. You'll find yourself swinging right back into those very same situations and scenarios that you said you wouldn't, maybe into a relationship dynamic that you said you wouldn't. But the difference is now you have a level of consciousness. You have opened up a quote unquote Pandora's box that can never be closed again. And sometimes there is a greater feeling of of tension and dissonance because we know what we know now. And so we are always being pulled towards our, our growth, our evolution that is so obvious to us. But for me, what I've learned is that there is a level of understanding, a level of kindness, a level of compassion, whatever that looks like for you, because I've realized it's different for all of us. Like for me, compassion is coming to understand why it is that people do the things that they do. That allows me to to let go of this story of this narrative of like evil person, bad person over there, good person over here, you know? It relaxes and, and, and tapers down that egoic trained mind that always wants to make an enemy, always wants to make an other and self. And I'm able to say, you know what? I get that. Like I've been in situations like that and I've done that, if not more dramatic, th- dramatic. I've done way more dramatic things within the same scenario. Or maybe it's something I can't relate to, Right. Because I've never been through that, but I don't know how I would have reacted in that situation. I don't know how I would have showed up if I was in their exact place. I don't. And so that level of understanding allows me to let go. And that same level of understanding that we're oftentimes told to have for others, we must first have for ourselves, right? In order to give water, I must first have water. And so I must begin to cultivate a level of, or you in our story, right? You must begin to cultivate that level of of compassion and grace towards yourself to be easy on yourself to say that if if today it seemed like you're on this upward trajectory and then tomorrow it seemed like you're right back at square one first and foremost there is no square one everything in life is evolution right that's just nature of life okay things always are moving towards expansion growth we may be resisting it but that doesn't change the facts So there is no going back to square one. But if you do feel this thing of, man, I've just found myself right back in this very same place, you have to know this. Well, you don't have to, but you have an opportunity to understand and to to deep this message. And the message is, it's okay. (laughs) There was nothing to fix in the first place. There was only something to recognize about yourself, that you are loved, that you are more than enough, that you are worthy of that love, and you always will be. That's what this is really all about. You know, the reason why I I made a full length video about why I left like the personal development or self-help world, et cetera, is because I finally accepted that it wasn't about fixing a broken system, right? Same thing with religiosity. There is oftentimes a narrative of I must purify, I must fix myself. Something is wrong with me and something must be fixed within. Um... There is a certain level of shame that most of us are are kind of indoctrinated with at the earliest stages of life. It's like a baseline level of shame. And then some get upgrades on that shame. You know what I mean? It's like stock speakers in your car, if you know what that is. Just like the basic speakers that you get in your car. You have like the basic shame that most people, you know, again, are born into. They aren't born with, but they're born into. And then some of us just get like souped up upgrades. We get two 12s in the trunk, you know? Two subwoofers, three subwoofers, pit my ride style, whole car is decked out with with, with shame. You know, and, and again for me, that was the experience of what religion was doing. Though it looked to be a, a a saving mechanism, it looked to be something that would pull me out of the problem. It was actually the perpetuator of the problem. And the problem is that we believe that we're anything other than loved and that we're anything other than perfection in this very moment that we are which may be so difficult to believe and so difficult to to accept, even more difficult to accept than to believe. You know, you might say, okay, yeah, I get that, I believe it, but to accept it for yourself as a reality for yourself 
is something entirely different. You know, it's like somebody can believe that it is possible to be wealthy, but it's like to believe it for yourself is an entirely different thing. And so, you know, as far as my own journey, that has been the most powerful shift for me because as I speak to you here, as I've spoken to you in the past, as I continue to speak to you in the future, I, I'm i not this, um, this, you know, grand master, all knowing, whatever. Like I know what I know and what I know is what has served me and what has not served me. What I know is that I am loved, I am appreciated. These are the things that I've come to now accept and internalize, but I'm not somebody who is is not susceptible to anything else that any other human is. The amount of times I have bought a journal and written day one of my true life time and time and time and time and time and time and and (laughs) y'all would be mind blown. The amount of times I'd found myself, you know, saying, okay, I'm not, I'm not about to go there with people. I'm not about to have those type of conversations. I'm not about to gossip. I'm not about to slander. I'm not about to talk down on anybody. And then finding myself right back in those loops. Times I said, I'm not going, you know, watch certain type of content as far as, you know, talking, talking down about people, scandalous type of stuff, juicy morsels, right? And then finding myself at 11.59 p.m., three hours after my intended bedtime, watching these damn videos, tuned in, glued in on my bed, just, you know, feeding my mind toxic waste. The amount of time I found myself in those situations, countless. The only reason I am where I am right now is because throughout that entire journey, I simply said to myself, this is where you are. You are where you are, right? And obviously we all have desires where we, you know, we want to be and desires are good. They're perfect and pure in themselves. They are of God. That's what the word desire means at its root, right? However, when we warp those desires, when we say that I need this in order for me to be whole, or I need this thing in order to feel better about myself, or I need this thing, otherwise I'm a nothing or a nobody. When we start to warp the desire in that way, that's when we start to have that inner conflict. And that's when we start to see, you know, these problematic elements of quote unquote desire. That's when we start to create these kind of religious beliefs of let go of all desires, let go of all desires, right? It's not the desire that is wrong. It is the way you're viewing it. It's like if you had a desire for somebody else's wife or husband, that is a warped desire. What you have is a desire for relationship, connection at some level. It's not to have what the other has, right? Envy is not pure desire. It is a warped desire. It's like desire in the neg- in its negative frame, per se. So it still has a message for you to say this is what you des- you know, this is something that is a desire for you, but when it is mixed in with I need or I am nothing without this, or I want what somebody else has, then we find ourselves in in a place of suffering. You know, that's all that is. Self-perpetuated suffering, by the way, because all suffering is self-made. Um, you know, one of the most powerful teachings I ever heard in my entire life, simple, simple. And I like simple stuff, like the Wayne Dyers of the world, et cetera, you know, just like straight to the point. Um, I may be a little conceptual and stuff. I'm, a, you know, I'm an Aquarian by nature. I'm just like sometimes in the quasars and, you know, in the, in the atmosphere, but you know, I do love simplicity. And the simple statement was pain is a natural process. Like pain is a natural part of the body and it actually serves us. It's a, it's a function that serves. Suffering is not suffering is the story that we tell about the pain, right? So if you have, you know, a shooting pain in your leg right now and you have no stories tied to that, you're not going to have a suffering. You're just going to say, oh, there's a shooting pain and then you're just going to move on about your life or maybe rest, whatever. Uh, or maybe let's say you're working out, you feel that soreness and you know what that soreness is and you have a, a positive story saying, oh, the soreness means that, you know, that's muscle stimulation, the muscle's going to start growing, etc. right? However, if you have a negative story about what's going on, a warped story. If you start saying, oh my goodness, I think my leg's gonna fall off, something's wrong with it, you know, this is probably some, and then you start going on WebMD or whatever it is, Mayo.com, Mayo Clinic, and you start looking up these symptoms and what's going on, and you start telling yourself these stories, you suffer in the process of telling yourself such stories. And this isn't just, you know, for physical pains, it's for emotional. Uh, When we tell ourselves what a negative emotion means, we suffer 
because we tell a story of something's wrong, something's bad, as opposed to a negative emotion is nothing more than an indicator. In the same way, a notification on your phone is indifferent. It's not a bad thing. It's just showing you that there's something that needs your attention, something that needs investigation. And so, you know, bringing it back to, to the point at hand is I simply had to realize that first and foremost, I am where I am and where I am is a perfect place. Where I am is perfectly fine, you know, right here, right now. I have great ambitions. I have deep desires. I have things I'm, you know, I'm knowing that are happening for me continuously and persistently. But I also know that those things do not define me as a person. And so I can now be kind to myself with that understanding and say, bro, like, why is it so serious in the first place? If love is within yourself, then why does it matter where your relationship dynamic is? If, you know, if fulfillment is within you, then why do you need to be somewhere in your career or be doing a certain thing, you know, in a certain way in order for you to be fulfilled? When you start to realize that everything has always been within you, you know, we say that statement and and I think there hasn't been enough attention placed or maybe there has, I don't know, you know, I mean, there hasn't been, no, I'm not, I'm gonna scratch that. Um, I've noticed for myself that there is a necessity to, to kind of bring, you know, just simple, basic understanding about things. And so, you know, for me, I had to realize that within you, like everything is within you. What does that mean? Well, it means that everything you're desiring or looking for is first within, like it, it's, it's original manifestation, it's essence is within you. And that lines up with universal law, right? Everything is energy. And so if I'm looking for appreciation in my physical experience, I'm looking to be appreciated, the appreciation exists within myself already, right? It's not saying, oh, there's like a Lamborghini, I'm gonna open my chest up and pull it out and then, you know, and then like water it and it grows. That's not what I'm talking about. But there is prosperity within you. And when you recognize that, it starts to show in your physical experience. There is, again, appreciation, which was a huge one for me. When I started to point that towards myself and realize, man, I can actually appreciate myself and I can see that I am appreciated. And, you know, when I started to look at that and, and I was filled up with the spirit of such, then the natural consequence of that was the people around me beginning to appreciate me in, in ways that I didn't even care about or need anymore, not care about. Um, I'm going to shift that wording a little bit, but I didn't have this need, this insatiable desiring want because it was already fulfilled, right? I didn't have the warp desire at least. It was fulfilled already. I already was appreciated. I felt appreciated. I felt appreciation because I was turning that inward on myself. You know, most of the things that we're looking for, we believe are these, you know, needs that must be met, you know, five love languages, whatever it is. Um, they're good for what they're good for when they're good for it. But then there comes a point where we have to accept that those things that we view as these needs are actually things that are within ourselves. That's why I call them perceived needs, because we perceive that there's a need there. It's like if, you know, I perceive that I have a need, you know, to um, to do certain things in order for my nail to grow. Right. And I continue to do this thing compulsively. It's a perceived need. So if I stop doing it, doesn't mean that the nail is not going to grow. As, as a matter of fact, my, my stuff has been growing so fast lately. Uh, it's really what I'm eating. Uh, I cut out the sugar and the carbs, et cetera. Um, been on a high protein, high fat diet for like the last year and some, and my nails grow fast. My hair's growing thicker. Yeah. It's, it's something different. That's why y'all see this full, full beard. This ain't no oil. This is, this is straight collagen directly from the source. Um, but yeah, when we perceive that there's a need, then we feel there's a deficit and we start to do things in order to fulfill it. And they never satisfy. They never, you know, get the job done. And we wonder why we wonder why, you know, this person who's showing up and is loving on us and is, you know, or what we perceive is loving on us and showing us attention. Why is it not enough? And we think, oh, maybe I just need a different type of person, right? You think maybe not my husband, but Chris Brown or something, right? Maybe if he's showing me attention, then it's going to be different. And then, you know, you see how that works out. It's just a perpetual cycle. Oh, maybe if, you know, if my boss was just to show me favor, you get three raises and it's still not enough. And you wonder why. Well, the why is, is is pretty simply answered. And that is what you're looking for is within you. And when you perceive it as being something that can be answered outside, you're actually missing the entire thing. And so, you know, my, my real point in this video, like I just turn these, you know, I, I just turn the camera on and I just start going. I don't even know what I'm about to talk about until I start talking about it. That's real. 
you know, I don't have a title, a subject of this or that. Like, it's just a stream of consciousness where my spirit really is. And so, you know, the message that is really coming up to heart is this thing of just be kind to yourself. Just be kinder to yourself, you know, simple as that. I have a, a project that I'm putting out, an, an LP, and there's a song on there called Easy On Me. I actually wrote this song before I knew there was an Adele version. So shout out to Adele that we have two that will exist or maybe more in the world. Um, but in, in the end of the song, you know, I say this is a, a reminder to be kinder to yourself. And so this is exactly what this is. By the way, because somebody's going to ask, what's the project called? It is called or titled Follow the North Star. Okay, that's the title. And when y'all see it, you'll know it. Trust me, when you'll see the cover, you'll know exactly what it is. I will put it on my DSPs or, you know, on the Spotify's, iTunes, things of that nature under Aquarius Wave. You can go look for that after, anytime after August 20th, that project will be out. But yeah, simple as this. Take it easy on yourself. Be nicer to yourself. Be kinder to yourself. Show yourself compassion and grace. And you'll naturally do so for others. You know, it, it would just be a byproduct of that. And you'll do so from an authentic place instead of from a, a scary place, instead of from a place of a fear of a loss of love. You'll know that you are loved and that you are loved. And so you can give that to those around you because your cup is not only full, but it's running over and it's spilling over into other people's cups. So that being said, I'm going to take a sip from my own cup. And um... hey. I used to be afraid of the dark Place unknown like a heart in their heart I, I used to see my life in the bar Now the kids unchained, every shackle is lost Two steps in the moonlight Two steps in the daytime You just know when it feel right Got a feeling the time's not I see you through those shades that I just threw on Through my lenses, you just can't do no wrong I fell in love with myself again I fell in love with myself I fell in love with the sunshine Fell in love with the light. Fell in love with the light. I fell in love with the full moon. I fell in love with the night. I can see 